Hi, I'm Matthew Schwartz, Executive Editor with Information Security Media Group, and I'm talking authentication with Tony Smales, CEO of FortiCode. Tony, thanks for joining me today. No worries, Matt, good to be here. So, given the current state of authentication, what would you classify as the biggest challenges that organizations are facing right now? Uh, so, partly it'll be legislation. There's new, new strictures coming into play that are making it, you've got to have a better way of ensuring that people are who they are when they're accessing critical information. And secondly, human behavior. People don't like being told what to do. They don't like having things made harder. So therefore, authentication has currently got some really interesting challenges of how do I enforce those strictures whilst at the same time making it easy for people to, to actually get in and, and do what they need to do on a daily basis. Now, give me a few uh, you know, acronym soups, if you will, of legislation. Obviously, so we have GDPR. GDPR, then there's well, mandatory data breach notification, which is down in Australia. There's a data re uh, breach reporting here in the US, and there's probably about another half dozen that are coming in through parts of parts of Asia and also into well, the secondary side, Southeast Asia. So it's becoming a common thread uh, where everyone is saying we have, we have to put accountability back on the organizations to look after the information and security of the people who they're, who they're actually sought, making money off, they're, they're providing services to. Now, so we have this obviously global phenomenon now, privacy, there's a huge push, also security, but now, what is the relationship that we're seeing here when authentication is concerned with privacy and security? Are there some nuances? Well, every, every system has the catch that you've got to be able to enforce accountability. So who has the right to access what? And then the privacy implications of having data. So the moment I hand over information to your company, I have an expectation you're going to look after it. And this is where the whole privacy comes in because what that means for you as an organization is you've got to find a way to secure it, make sure it can't be accessed or utilized, but then that kind of defeats your marketing angles and all the other things that you actually want to use that data for. So, so there's a real strong counterpoint between good security controls and the need to enforce and have privacy versus the realities of how businesses really want to use information that they're collecting. So again, it's a really interesting problem space that the world's facing right now. It's great to talk about security privacy. Speaking personally, not wanting to denigrate you know, humanity or anything, yep. one of the big challenges that we all face is we want it to work. We want it to work right away. Ease of access, ease of use. So what are some of the issues with that when it comes to helping organizations get to where they need to be and prove they are yep. with security and privacy? Okay, so you can take a few different lenses on this. So one would be the, a very strong push into AI and biometrics. Now, underneath some of these new legislations, that information, if you keep it inside your organization, it's deemed PII. This is part of the privacy information that they're wanting you to protect. So the, the traditional ways of authenticating that have been put down as these are easy, convenient ways, they're really an, identi an identity, an identification. They're not an, an authentication. There's no intent behind it. So, so this is a, a really interesting problem space that says my fingerprints prove that I'm me, but it doesn't prove I want to do anything. And so that information suddenly being inside an organization becomes an interesting privacy problem in that same context. But so with users, users have an expectation. I want to be able to do what I want to do when I want to do it, and I should have the most frictionless path to be able to go through that process. But at the same time, the organization has all these new obligations that says I have to ensure it's you, I have to ensure the information is being used correctly, and if the, if the information belongs to somebody else when you access it, how do I actually get that person to the loop so that they can approve the fact that I'm about to use their data? And these are some of the challenges that are coming through in the industry right now. Now, we have a lot going on right now. What happens, do you think, in the next five years? Any big changes or you know, what are you anticipating seeing? So, I suppose, in, in relation to the whole industry, data management, security of information, and then access and authentication, the, the, current, the current system is to hold it close, is to try and bring all that into a control point that a business or a government owns, and then work through how do I protect and control that. The, the trend that I predict will occur over the next five years is that will flip quite substantially. So what will happen is that all of the information in relation to your rights, to your access controls, will actually end up in your own control and organizations and governments will have a mechanism that allows them to validate and interact, but only with your consent, because it's the only way that they can guarantee that you are who you are when accessing your information. So a good example of this would be you turn up in a hospital, your doctor hasn't got your medical records. He requests to see your medical records and then you approve it through a digital channel. If you're unconscious on the ground, 
then there's a mechanism that allows someone else to approve. But there's always two people involved. There won't be any more single point access risks, which is again where pretty much all organisations get into trouble. It's from the inside that most things go bad. Mm -hmm. So how is FortiCode helping organisations address the kinds of authentication challenges that you've been outlining? Yep. So, so FortiCode has, a, I suppose, a, a different lens on, on how the whole authentication chain works. So we have a view that it's not just the organisation having a right to validate me, I have the right to validate the organisation at the same time. So if I'm going to have a relationship with a healthcare provider, whenever I interact with them, I should be able to be certain that I've actually got that provider at the same time that they've got me. And our, our framework, that platform, the way it works, it's designed to provide high-level multi-factor security for every single interaction, not just the authentication chain, but approvals, workflows, all that, where every interaction is a unique multi-factor challenge, but no one knows it's happening. It's all designed so that the user gets a very seamless experience, which they can customize to their own kind of way of doing things, gives them all the control points, but the organization gets the security. And this means that again, because you don't know you're behaving well, you're generally more likely to do it. So that's a useful <laughs> check and balance, isn't it? Very. Okay, wonderful. Tony, thanks very much for your time and insights today. No worries, Matt. Thank you very much. I've been speaking about authentication, the state of authentication, and privacy and security of authentication with Tony Smales of FortiCode. I'm Matthew Schwartz with Information Security Media Group. Thank you very much for joining us.